want to read some verses from John chapter 21. John chapter 21. This is after the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. As you probably already know, he was crucified upon the cross. Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures. And that he was buried and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. So uh, chapter 21 of uh, John, uh, of Gospel of John. After these things, Jesus showed himself again to the disciples at the Sea of Tiberias, and on this wise, or in this way, showed he himself. There were together Simon Peter and Thomas, called Didymus, and Nathaniel of Cana of Galilee, and the sons of Zebedee, and two other of his disciples. Simon Peter said unto them, I go a fishing. They say unto him, We also go with thee. They went forth and entered into a ship immediately, and that night they caught nothing. But when the morning uh, was now come, Jesus stood on the shore, but his disciples knew not that it was Jesus. Then Jesus said unto them, Children, have ye any meat? They answered him, No. And he said unto them, Cast the net on the right side of the ship, and ye shall find. They cast therefore, and now they were not able to draw it for the multitude of fishes. Therefore that disciple whom Jesus loved said unto Peter, It is the Lord. Now when Simon Peter heard that it was the Lord, he girded his fish's coat unto him, for he was naked, and did cast himself into the sea. And the other disciples came in a little ship, for they were not far from land, but as it were two hundred cubits, dragging the net of fishes. As soon then as they were come to land, they saw a fire of coals there, and fish laid thereon, and bread. Jesus said unto them, Bring of the fish which ye have now caught. Simon Peter went up and drew the net to land full of great fishes, an hundred and fifty and three. And for all there were so many, yet was not the net broken. Jesus said unto them, Come and dine. And none of the disciples durst ask him, that means they did, none of them did, uh, dared to ask him, Who art thou, knowing it was the Lord? Knowing that it was the Lord. Jesus then cometh and taketh bread and giveth them and fish likewise. This is now the third time that Jesus showed himself to his disciples after that he was risen from the dead. So when they had dined, Peter, uh, or Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me more than these? He saith unto him, Yea, Lord, thou knowest that I love thee. He saith unto him, Feed my lambs. He saith to him again the second time, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me? He saith unto him, Yea, Lord, thou knowest that I love thee. He saith unto him, uh, Feed my sheep. He saith unto him the third time, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me? Peter was grieved because he said unto him the third time, Lovest thou me? And he said unto him, Lord, thou knowest all things. This is something we should keep in mind. Lord, thou knowest all things. Thou knowest that I love thee. Jesus saith unto him, Feed my sheep. Verily, verily, or truly, truly, I say unto thee, When thou wast young, thou girdest thyself, and walkest whither or where thou wouldest. But when thou shalt be old, Thou shalt stretch, stretch forth thy hands, and another shall gird thee, and carry thee whither or where thou wouldest not. This spake he, signifying by what death he should glorify God. And when he had spoken this, he saith unto him, Follow me. Then Peter, turning about, seeth the disciple whom uh, Jesus loved following, we know that from another gospel, that is uh, John, which also leaned on his breast at supper, and said, Lord, which is he that betrayeth thee? Peter, seeing, uh, seeing him, saith to Jesus, Lord, and what shall this man do? Jesus saith unto him, If I will that he tarry till I come, 
What is that to thee? Follow thou me. In other words, mind your own business. Just follow me as an individual. This is the desire of a disciple of our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. Someone who's been saved by the grace of God and who really does mean business with God is called a disciple of our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. Then went this saying abroad among the brethren that that disciple should not die. Yet Jesus uh, said not unto him, He shall not die, but if I will that he tarry till I come, what is that to thee? This is the disciple which testifieth of these things, and wrote these things, and we know that his testimony is true. And there are also many other things which Jesus did, the which, if they should be written every one, I suppose that even the world itself could not contain the books that should be written. Amen. So the Lord Jesus Christ did a lot more things that are, than, than that are written in the Gospel. But these are just a small sampling of what he did. We need to understand that the Lord Jesus Christ has the power to save us. You and I have need of salvation. You and I, being sinners in the sight of the Lord, we need to believe on him to become children of God, to be saved, to have forgiveness for our sins. Without that new birth, without being born again, we are on our way to hell. I can't make it any plainer than that. And I, if I would not tell you this as a warning, I would not be a proper preacher of the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. You see, the gospel comes with bad news, first of all. The bad news is that we're all sinners. But the good news is that the Lord Jesus Christ came down from heaven to die upon the cross for you and for me and be the sinless sacrifice upon that cross. Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures and he was buried but praise God the third day he rose again according to the scriptures I wonder is your soul saved are you on your way to heaven are you still on the broad road that leads down to hell and destruction there's no need for that you and I need the salvation of the Lord you see salvation is of the Lord if we're ever going to be saved we'll have to be God's work and God moved he could have just let us all go to hell and be done with it and be totally justified in doing so. But he decided that in love he would send his beloved son down from heaven. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. I wonder, do you have that everlasting life this afternoon? In other words, are you on your way to heaven? Are you still on the broad road that leads down to hell and destruction? God is not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Now, repentance is a change of mind. It's simply coming to God and agreeing with Him, Yes, I realize that I am a sinner. But thy son has died for me upon the cross of Calvary. And then all you need to do is simply put your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. And that can be yours this afternoon. Why go on in your sin without forgiveness for your sins? When the forgiveness of God is offered unto you through the sacrifice of Jesus Christ upon the cross of Calvary. The one who died that day on the cross can be your saviour this afternoon. I wonder what will you do then with Jesus which is called the Christ. Will either be your saviour or it'll have to be your judge. What will it be for you? Have you been born again into God's family through faith in our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ? I want to go on now to Acts chapter 1. Acts of the Apostles chapter 1, the former treaties have I made, O Theophilus, of all that Jesus began both to do and teach until the day in which uh, he was taken up after that he, through the Holy Spirit, had given commandments unto the apostles whom he had chosen. To whom also he showed himself alive after his passion by many infallible proofs, being seen of them forty days, and speaking of the things pertaining to the kingdom of God. And being assembled together with them, uh, commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the Father, 
which said he, ye have heard of me. For John truly baptized with water, but ye shall be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days hence. When they therefore were come together, they asked of him, saying, Lord, wilt thou at this time restore again the kingdom to Israel? And he said unto them, It is not for you to know the times or all the seasons which the Father hath put in his own power. But ye shall receive power after that the Holy Spirit is come upon you. And ye shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and unto the uttermost part of the earth. And here we are in the land of Oz and I'm preaching the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ unto you knowing that he's the only way that we can be saved, the only way of salvation is found in the Son of God, the Lord Jesus Christ, who loved us enough to die upon the cross. He is the sinless sacrifice, the Lamb slain before the foundation of the world. And God wants us to be in heaven. The only way we can be in heaven is through faith in our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. And I, I'm a witness for the Lord Jesus Christ here, walking this beach at Burley, Concerned about your soul that we might be in heaven and not down in hell. God wants you to be in heaven. The only way we can be in heaven is through faith in the Lord Jesus Christ alone. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. What have you called upon the name of the Lord for your eternal salvation? As I said before, salvation is of the Lord. We're ever going to be saved we'll have to be God's work. God now commandeth all men everywhere to repent. Now what is repentance? It's a change of mind. Simply agree with God that you are a sinner and then place your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. You know, a question was asked a long time ago, what must I do to be saved? The simple answer was this. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. That can be yours this afternoon. You can get right with God. Your sins can be totally washed away in the precious blood of the Lord Jesus Christ as of a lamb without blemish and without spot. The Lord Jesus Christ loved us so much to die upon the cross. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Why do you have that everlasting life? That can only come through faith in our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. There's no one else good enough to be the divine substitute, the sinless sacrifice upon the cross of Calvary. No one else apart from the Lord Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God, who has made sin for us, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. And so we need to understand our sinful condition before the Lord. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. There is not a just man upon the earth that doeth good and sinneth not. We're all in the same boat. We're all tied with the same brush. We are going down to hell without Jesus Christ as our Saviour. But I'm here to tell you this afternoon that your soul can be saved. And that's, I'm concerned about your soul. Now we all have a soul inside of our body, spirit and soul. And our spirit and soul leave our body at the moment of death. Where will you be five seconds after you die? Will you be in heaven? The only way you can be in heaven is through the Lord Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God, who loved us enough to die upon the cross of Calvary for your sin and for mine. Yes, Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. Will you admit the fact that you are a sinner before the Lord and that you need his eternal salvation? First up, we've got to understand that we're sinners because it's like we don't go, Scripture says, it's uh, we don't go to a doctor unless we're sick. And that's the same with us. We've got to understand we have a sickness called sin. Now this sickness is a lot worse than the coronavirus. I know we're a bit concerned about the coronavirus, and rightly so. But there's something that's more deadly than the coronavirus. And that is the virus of sin. 
These sins need forgiveness. And the only way of forgiveness is through the sacrifice of the Lord Jesus Christ upon the cross. He's the one who died in the sinner's place. He is the sinless substitute that took the sinner's place that day that you and I might be delivered from the wrath which is to come. See, God is angry with the wicked every day. That is, those who are not saved. If you're not a child of God, God is angry with you. I'm not going to beat around the bush because it's the truth. We need to become the friends of God. That the only way we can become friends of God or friends with God is by believing on His Son, Jesus Christ, and receiving Him as our Saviour. Because I keep on saying, I've said it many times, that the Lord Jesus Christ will either be our Saviour or will have to be our Judge. You must make that decision. Make a wise choice this afternoon. Get right with God. As a result of repentance toward God, as I've said, just agree with God that you are a sinner and then put your faith in our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Salvation is the gift of God and it's only obtained through faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. That's why the Bible says, He that hath the Son hath life. He that hath not the Son of God hath not life. I wonder, do you have the Son of God? Have you believed on Him for your eternal salvation? Do you like something to read? Do you like something to read? Yes, I said before, Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. So first up, we've got to understand that we're sinners in the sight of the Lord. And there's going to be no sin in heaven because that place is undefiled. And if you and I went there in our sinful condition, we would defile heaven. And God, as I've said, can have no sin in his presence in heaven. And so the Lord Jesus Christ, having loved us, he loved us unto the end, unto death, even the death of the cross. The Bible says, Cursed is everyone that hangeth upon a tree. He was made sin for us, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. And so that if you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, your soul will be saved. You'll have everlasting life. You'll have peace with God and a home in heaven for all eternity. And that's what God wants for you, my friend. He doesn't want you to go down to hell and eventually the lake of fire for all eternity. God is not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Just come to a point where you confess the fact that you are a sinner before the God of heaven. Do you really think that you can pull the wool over God's eyes? Look, nothing escapes the all-seeing eye of Almighty God. He's up with everything. He knows our email address, he knows our address, our phone number, all sorts of details, the whole lot. Nothing can be hidden from the all-seeing eye of God. This should strike fear into our hearts. We should understand and realize that we're in big trouble because we're in trouble with the creator of the universe. The one who created this whole universe, and it's nice to walk along the beach here, I'm just enjoying the creation of God. I see these beautiful waves coming in here and the sand on the sea, or on the shore. It's great to enjoy the things of the Lord. But what about your soul? Is your soul saved? Hi. You want something to read? Yeah, what are you what are you reading from the Bible? Yeah. Yeah, cool. Are yeah. you part of a church? Oh, I'm just what? a Christian. I just do street preaching basically or awesome. open air preaching, you know. Yeah. That's so good. Thank yeah, I, you. I love it. I just I just <laughs> see the thing is I'm really concerned about people's soul. They need to be saved yeah, and I agree. you know, we all need to be saved. We all need to have forgiveness for our sins and the only way is through the Lord Jesus Christ, and so I'm trying to. This is the first time I've actually done this is on, on, on the beach, you know, on the sand. Yeah. But it's it's interesting. Yeah, it's um, yeah. yeah. It's just another another venue of mine, you know. So it's good to have the whole world to go around and preach the gospel wherever I am, sort of thing, you know. And yeah. Yeah. Thanks for coming over. My name's Dave, anyway. I'm Lizzie. Lizzie. It's nice to meet you. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. Thanks for coming over. I appreciate the talk with you. And, That's uh, so great. Yeah. Thank you for spreading the word. Yeah. God bless you. May you have a good day. <laughs> and uh, yeah. Thanks you very too. much for coming over. Yeah. Yeah. See you later. Keep going. Actually, I was going to say, if you want 
This afternoon at 4.30, yeah. I forgot to invite you, but 4.30, do you know Burley much? Do you know? Yeah, a little yeah. bit. Yeah, well, um, Anzac Parade, do you know Anzac Parade? It's op pretty much opposite Macca's. Okay, yeah. Yeah, well, oh, we're, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, we're having a meeting at 4.30 at number 5 Anzac Parade. It's actually the Gospel Hall. Okay. So you, you invited to come along, Lizzie, okay. wouldn't you? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, 4.30 and we do this every Sunday. Yeah. We have um, meetings at 4.30, so you're welcome to come along okay. 4.30 to 5.30. Beautiful. Yeah, so, you know, <laughs> feel free to come, you know, I'm just inviting you. Are, yeah. you, are you local? I, I actually come down from near Bean Lee. Okay. You know, but um, but yeah, well, I come down here for the meetings, for the yeah. Christian meetings, and yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, it was good to talk to you, Lizzie, and you too. Uh, thanks for coming over. Yeah. Thank you. See you later. Yeah. Um, verse 8, verse 8 of, uh, I just forget where it was, but anyway, Acts uh, chapter 1 and verse 8, But ye shall receive power after that the Holy Spirit is come upon you, and ye shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and unto the uttermost part of the earth. And when he had spoken these things, while they beheld, he was taken up, this is the Lord Jesus Christ, he was taken up, and a cloud received him out of their sight. And while they looked steadfastly toward heaven, as he went up, behold, two men stood by them in white apparel, which also uh, said, Ye men of Galilee, why stand ye gazing up into heaven? This same Jesus, which is taken up from you into heaven, uh, shall so come in like manner as ye have seen him go into heaven. Then returned they to Jerusalem uh, from the mount called Olivet, which is from Jerusalem a Sabbath day's journey. And when they were come in, they went up into an upper room, where abode both Peter and James and John and Andrew, Philip and Thomas, Bartholomew and Matthew, James the son of Alphaeus, and Simon Zelotes and Judas the brother of James. These all continued uh, with one accord in prayer and supplication with the women and Mary the mother of Jesus and with his brethren. And in those days Peter stood up in the midst of the disciples and said the number of uh, names together were about an hundred and twenty. Men and brethren, this scripture must needs have been fulfilled, uh, which the Holy Spirit by the mouth of David spake, before concerning Judas, which was guide to them that took Jesus. For he was numbered with us and uh, had obtained part of this ministry. Now this man purchased a field with the reward of iniquity, and falling headlong, he burst asunder in the midst, and all his bowels gushed out. That is, Judas Iscariot, the one who had betrayed the Lord unto the chief priests and, and uh, what have you. And it was known unto all the dwellers at Jerusalem, insomuch as that field is called in their proper tongue a seldomer, which is to say the field of blood. For it is written in the book of Psalms, Let his habitation be desolate, and let no man dwell therein. And his bishopric let another take. Wherefore, of these uh, men which have companied with us all the time that the Lord Jesus went in and out among us, beginning from the baptism of John, unto that same day that he was taken up from us, must one be ordained, to be a witness with us of his resurrection. And they appointed to Joseph uh, called Barsabas, uh, who was surnamed Justice, and Matthias. And they prayed and said, Lord, thou that knowest the hearts of all men, show whether or which of these two thou hast chosen, that he may take part of this ministry 
an apostleship from which Judas by transgression fell, that he might go to his own place. And they gave forth their lots, and the lot fell upon Matthias, and he was numbered with the eleven apostles. So they had to take a um, replace Judas Iscariot, who was the betrayer, the one that betrayed the Lord Jesus Christ under the chief priests and so on. They had to replace him. So this man took his place, this uh, Matthias, and he became number 12 again. So I brought the number from 11 uh, up to back up to 12 again. But the point is this, you and I, the whole point is this. You and I, being sinners in the sight of the Lord, need forgiveness for our sins. Now, without that forgiveness, we are heading down to hell, and God does not want us to go down to hell. But the Father sent the Son to be the Saviour of the world. But is He your Saviour this afternoon? You need to make Him yours, because if you don't, well then, at the moment of death, you'll be in hell, and God does not want ever anyone to perish. He's not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Repentance being a change of mind. Simply agree with God that you are a sinner, and then put your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. Yes, thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sin. You see, he came unto his own, and his own received him not. You see, he came to the Jews as a nation. Because he was born a Jew. But never ever think that the Lord Jesus Christ began to exist when he was born of Mary. That's wrong. He's the eternal self-existent God. And he came down and was clothed with a body. That in that body he by the grace of God should taste death for every man. He died on the cross for every single human being that has been born and that will be born. God is not willing that any should perish. So we see that well-known verse, I'm sure you probably already know this verse, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. That everlasting life is on offer unto you this afternoon through faith in our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. What will you do then with Jesus, which is called the Christ? I wonder, see, your eternal destiny depends on what you do with our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. He'll either be your Saviour or he'll have to be your judge. Make a wise choice this afternoon. Get right with God as a result of repentance toward God. Change your mind. Agree with God that you are a sinner. Just be honest before the God of heaven. And then put your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Do it now before it's forever and eternally too late. Just remember, for the wages of sin is death. That is the problem. We all sin. And this is the problem. You see, the wages of sin is death. We earn those wages. And that's why we have physical life upon this earth, uh, physical death, sorry, upon this earth. You and I die as a result of sin. And sin, another scripture says this, and sin when it is finished bringeth forth death. So the wages of sin is death. It's not only physical death. It's eternal death. And you and I, when we're born into this world, are spiritually dead, as far as God is concerned. We need to be made alive in Christ. We need to have the new birth. We need to be born again into God's family through faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. That's the Lord Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. Either be your Saviour or it'll have to be your judge. The rest of the verse says, we've looked at the bad thing, the uh, negative. The rest of the verse says, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. I'm here to tell you this afternoon, there's no other way of being in heaven apart from our Lord and Saviour, 
Jesus Christ who died upon the cross, shed his precious blood, was buried, but praise God he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. If you're interested in this, look me up, youtube.com forward slash peace by Jesus Christ. God bless you and thanks for listening.